In the spring of 2003, British Airways announced that Concorde was being phased out of commercial use and the last flight would take place on Friday the 24th of October. Of the seven British Airways Concords, one, GBOAA, was given to Scotland. This plane had not flown since the year 2000 and was no longer airworthy, so it was decided to remove the wings and tail, load the fuselage onto a transporter and send it north by sea. On Saturday the 3rd of April 2004, Concorde was rolled out of its hangar at Heathrow. It then trundled along at 8 miles an hour to the River Thames and was carefully loaded on a special barge called the Terra Marique. It then sailed down the river to London. On April the 12th, Easter Bank Holiday, it sailed through London and then eastward along the Thames and north towards Scotland. It arrived at Torness, the harbour for the nuclear power station, on Saturday the 17th of April. Crowds of people were there to watch. Great care was needed in unloading Concord from the barge onto the quay. On Sunday, Concorde remained on the quayside at Torness until the evening, while it rained on and off all day. Late in the evening, Concorde set off from Torness along the A1 using one of the dual carriageways. By this time, it was raining steadily. It was 11 p.m. when it reached the Dunbar roundabout, where, even at that late hour, Dozens of people were waiting to see it pass. As the trailer only travelled quite slowly, this video is speeded up a little. It had quite a job negotiating the bends round the Dunbar roundabout. The roads between the A1 and the Museum of Flight are quite narrow, so for the last mile or more, Concord had to be taken across fields over which the Royal Engineers had laid an aluminium matting track. The journey was begun on Monday morning and took about an hour. The man with the yellow box is the one who guides it. He can either walk in front or sit on a driving seat. The start was quite slow. But once everything seemed okay, they speeded up. Across the fields, Concorde was set for walking speed. It is ironic that the plane which used to go faster than the speed of sound now moves so slowly. At the Museum of Flight itself, while people were waiting for Concorde to arrive, a demonstration of acrobatic flying had been arranged. But as Concorde got nearer, most people were on the lookout for the big plane on the ground rather than the small one in the air. And here it is at last, arriving at the Museum of Flight, its new home. A real Scottish welcome. talking to a gentleman there from BA and said it's sad too isn't it? Sad to see 
No, without the tail, without the wings, without the undercarriage. Never fly again, and shall be appreciated. That the design and the beauty will be appreciated by tens of thousands of people. Going to be the star attraction here at the Museum of Flight. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call on Frank McAfee, the Minister for Tourism, Culture and Sport, and Gordon Rintoul, Director of the National Museums of Scotland, to formally welcome Concord to this uh, Museum of Flight. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome here in a very cold and, and windy Museum of Flight. It's terrific seeing so many people here today. I'm Gordon Rintoul, Director of the National Museums of Scotland, and we're very proud indeed that the Concord has now arrived on, on, on site. It's really a historic day for the Museum of Flight and I think for, for Scotland. It's not every day you see Concorde arriving and you'll certainly never ever see it, see it again. There was huge competition from across the world uh, from organisations, museums and others who wanted to house Concorde and provide a home for one of the British Airways Concorde fleet. And it seems to me that Concorde is one of these things that touches the hearts of many people both across Scotland and, and across the UK. But getting Concorde here, for those of you who have been following all the press coverage, was you, you'll know already, it was a huge task. It was probably one of the most complex transportation projects ever undertaken in the, U, in the UK. And we wouldn't have done it without the support of a, a wide range of people. It's a great day for Scotland, a great day for the National Museums, and most of all, a great day for our museums of the people who will benefit from it over the next few months and years. Thank you very much. Two, one. Concorde is now beginning a 360 degree turnaround, or rather one and a half complete turns before backing into the hangar. Concorde is being turned, keeping one end stationary. This trailer, you're looking at approximately a million pounds worth of trailer. It's quite impressive how all the wheels change direction together. Concorde is being backed into the hangar. As it was all done very carefully and slowly on the day, the video is speeded up. This hangar will be Concorde's final home. The wings and tail will be replaced and the fuselage polished up. Concorde will be ready to receive visitors in March 2005. Why not come and see her here in Scotland?